Yo. Over the many years of Pokemon, they've had their fair share of spin-offs. To the incredible Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, to whatever the hell this is. But it's one series that seemingly no one talks about. Poke Park. Specifically, its sequel. I actually played the first game before and really enjoyed it. So if you want, I recommend you check it out. But this game, it's different. Fire. Eternal fire. A flame so large it could burn anything to the ground. Electricity. Dangerous. Could leave you permanently paralyzed. But you're using it right now. Darkness. Eternal darkness. The one thing that could swallow you and everything you love whole. We're running through a cave and meet up with our best friend Piplup. We're gonna have some fun with everyone at the beach. Piplup takes us along the way teaching us some basic controls of the game, like how to run and jump. Once we make it to the beach, we meet some Pokemon who are pitching Wish Park, a place where you can always have fun. It is proposed for only 10 berries? Yeah, y'all about to get scammed. Then we meet Oshawa, who is being blatantly racist towards us and then asks for 10 berries. Fuck you! We pay the fine of 20 berries to get into Wish Park and run into the portal. Nothing seems right about this place. It all feels unreal. We meet the others who also wound up here and they all go try out the attraction. Back in the first game, attractions were a big part of the story, and there were so many of them. In this game, however, yeah, I mean, there's a couple. Anyway, this one was super easy as usual, and then we were offered the cake we made from it. We were about to eat it before we were informed that the cake was laced. Yeah, I knew something weird was going on. Kafagrius doesn't let us through, however, so we had to defeat his Yamask army. Darkness. It could be anything. It can chase you. But no matter how far you run, you'll still lose something. Something special. Oshawott's gonna make a report to Samurott and he asks us to come with him. Once we talk with Samurott, Oshawott reveals that he might have solved the missing Pokemon's report by stumbling on Wish Park. Samurott requests that we help Oshawott in his case. However, he gets super defensive saying he's more than capable. We battle him where like in every other game that is covered on every other YouTube channel, we won. Oshawa lowers his guard, meaning we can join him on his mission. In the first game, we were locked to Pikachu on any segment that wasn't an attraction. However, technology has really improved in Poke Park because now we're able to swim and we can change on the fly between Pikachu and Oshawa. The bridge is destroyed on the way to Cove Town, so we need to get Timber his hammer to fix it. He left it in the lighthouse, where the first of this game's 2D platformer levels play out. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Oh yeah, we're going to Cove Town to stop these assholes from kidnapping more Pokemon. And what did you expect to happen? We have another gimmick of this game being the billboards. Basically, it's another shaking mini game. But except for being fun, it feels more like being in a hospital fighting Carpal Tunnel while having to write a script for a video. And dear God, how do you explain to your mom that you got Carpal Tunnel from goddamn Poke Park 2 Wonders Beyond? And I didn't get Carpal Tunnel, by the way. That was just a bit. We return to Wish Park where everyone is feeding for some more cake. Pause. But even so, the sky feels so... Dark. We return to the same attraction as before, but now it's improved. And now we need to get a high score this time. And the second try always works. For some reason, this guy believed he could actually beat me in the battle, so now we have to battle. Yeah, this game isn't that hard. In each of their zones, there's a bell that will revert all Pokemon out of their twisted state. It also serves another purpose, but we'll get back to that later. Anyway, we ring the bell, setting everyone free from the zone. We also asked where Piplup was, and why am I not surprised? He also just dropped every little piece of lore about Wish Park right in front of us, and was shocked when the goth baby and toddler got angry at him. We will make a world where the fun will never end, fuck you. Worse. It gets worse every day that passes. This is only the beginning, and only you had the power to fix it. We return to Samurai, who asked us to go to the other zones to solve all the other missing Pokemon's cases. Musharna also informs us about some useful lore. Poke Park and Wish Park were actually once whole, until they were separated once born. Now we need to talk about Crocodile. Oh my god, <laughs> He has the key to open the door that we need to go to the next area. However, this fucker is horny and wants to see Audino. God damn, you're so down bad. He then resorts to beating up little kids to impress her. What the hell? <laughs> Only for him to lose! How do you manage to lose at everything and you're still trying to rinse her up? Cause god damn it ain't working. We make it to the arbor area where we run into Snivy who tells us that we're boring. Shut the fuck! We also meet Zora who lost one of their friends in Wish Park. However, we can't get them back because the poster is torn. The Snivy comes back to fucking mock us with info just to tell us it was Whimsicott. God bless. Whimsicott took part of the poster and made it into invitations for the berry party. She gave it to the power of the land superior. Ugh. 
She starts to make fun of Oshawa, which is actually pretty funny. But then she gives us an invitation that was given to Deerling. <laughs> and then when we reach Deerling's house, she said it's somewhere inside her home. Ooh! And to add on top of all of it, Snivy joins us. Ah! So we grab the damn invitation, experience Carpal Tunnel again, and then we finally make it back to Wish Park in the new zone. We meet Zorro's friend Zorwark, who is quite literally under mind control. Where Steel will now. The goth toddler comes back to tell us that she doesn't want us here and attacks us with Zorowark. Now, if you're just tuning in, thank you by the way, we've had no trouble with any of the other bosses so far. So, we free Zorowark and make our way up to the attraction. In this attraction, we basically have to dance, but it's really just kind of shaking your Wiimote. I can't help but notice that they put low punny on that dancing one. Poke Park is a fucked up world, man. Chandelier also can't admit that I won, so we have to destroy all of his equipment, including a disco. Damn, I actually kind of feel bad now. Kothitel teleports into the scene to warn us. She will now also make all of us disappear. However, Zorowark, Zora, and Piplup get ready to attack and protect us. The lazy bitch then leaves, which allows us to ring the doorbell. The doorbell? Which allows us to ring the wish bell to free everyone. We reunite with Piplup who decides that he's gonna stay in Wish Park as he feels it would be more helpful if he stayed. We say goodbye and make our way through the portal. The lightning that strikes the skies. It warns of a vortex. Something that will swallow you and everything you love. A darkness that grows bigger and bigger until balance is brought. It all lies on you. We have another area that's having reports of missing Pokemon, the Crag area. We also meet Victini who says her friend disappeared. Oshawa thinks it has something to do with Wish Park and the missing Pokemon's reports. But he actually just got stuck in a cannon after trying to use one of his moves. The only way to get him out is firing the cannon, but he's scared. No one gives a fuck, get out of there. He gets angry and so, yeah. He has short term memory loss and decides to join us for some reason. But we're okay with it because he allows us to get into the battle tournament. Embor is the one who can get us in, but we need to destroy a rock and get the bravery beard. So we shoot ourselves out of a cannon and grab the beard. We go into the Coliseum for a tournament, which I'm gonna be really honest, I don't know why we're here because Poke Park is about to die, but whatever. In the Coliseum, we have to fight Hydreigon, who seems really disappointed, even though he's soon gonna lose. He, however, got caught sneaking Pokemon into the portal. He wanted to win to get Victini's power. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> that level of disrespect, I would not take that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he is so disrespectful. We now have another segment that makes me really question why I got this game, and we hop into the next zone. A Dragon and Haxorus are waiting for us, and Haxorus challenges us to a battle. But he does it in the most pussy way possible. After completing this tempo run sequence, we fight him and I think you know what happens next. These absolute assholes are salty that I won and are requesting the goth mommy for powers. They then try to attack her, but... Uh, Darkrai? Holy shit! We head to Gothitelle's attraction, which is just a quick time event. And genuinely the most fun attraction in the entire game. But yeah, it wasn't really even that close, it was pretty easy. She decides that she isn't gonna fight us, but instead just let us ring the bell. That is so incredibly based. We also get Victini back. But with every good, there's a bad. Our best friend. Gone. The darkness will swallow everything. This is a message to not interfere. Or worse can happen. But this is just the beginning. We might be able to learn more about everything if we go to the tech area. Welcome to LA. Sorry, I'm at the train depot. We were told without permission from the leader, we can't be here, so we should just leave. So we beat up the leader, Keldor. We tell him why we're here, but he got interrupted as the iron bridge was broken. We offer to help and head back to Seasong Beach. Timber is the guy that we need, but he doesn't have the materials. So we go to Samron and ask for the materials, which he agrees and just sends them over to the tech area. The vortex grows bigger. Soon, the fire and lightning will disappear. Poke Park and Wish Park will fall if we don't hurry. We fix the bridge, meaning the train can get back. We have to run over the trains and beat Golurk. I said we beat Golurk! 
and Golurk shoves a train into the wall to get us into the warehouse. We solve another children's puzzle and get into the back room. These gears are required to work the elevator and they left. Great. While we're looking for them, I want to tell you all about a little theory that I've been having. I noticed there's a lot of similarities between Pokey Park 1 and Wish Park. Both have attractions, seem to narrow their area, zones, etc, etc. Now we do know that Wish Park and Pokey Park were both one place at a certain point in time. What if that time was the events of Pokey Park 1? But I think we can push this further. What if the crystal from Pokey Park 1 broke the two worlds apart? Wish Park throughout the entire game is framed as a bad place. So what if the crystal took all the bad out of Pokey Park, but in turn creating Wish Park, which could satisfy the needs of evil Pokemon? Yeah, I think I'm going insane too. Anyway, we found Clink Clank and Clink Clank. They open the door, meaning we can take the elevator down into the Scientorium. Before we go on, I really want to talk about the music of this. Because, man, it is so goddamn good if it weren't for the fucking pause. We enter this weird room where Reuniclus is. Reuniclus is the inventor of the poster portals, and yeah. This Pokemon doesn't go outside because if he did, he'd see the giant vortex planning to eat everything, and he didn't know about it when we told him. Also, remember when I said, in each of their zones, there's a bell that will revert all Pokemon out of their twisted state. It also serves another purpose, but we'll get back to that later. Yeah, well, they also control time, and if they stop ringing, then a space warp starts to grow. He also has a portal, but needs a Cytron Collider? What the hell is that? Never mind. Anyway, we deal with another 2D platforming segment. Yay! Reuniclus fixes the portal and we break our fingers and my neck. Ow! Ow! Oh my god, I got a pain in my neck for some reason. That's insane power levels. Ow, my neck, bro. I was like, ah. And we enter the portal to Wish Park once again. The flight zone, like every other zone, has an attraction run by Sigilyph, which, guess what? It's Rainbow Road, baby, from the incredibly popular franchise Mario Kart that debuted on the Super Nintendo, yeah! But if we're being real, this is an absolute acid trip for the first three laps. We couldn't get to the bell because he blocked our way. And his reason was, Wah, wah, you weren't supposed to win, I'm gonna rig the rules to make me win. But before we can beat him, we have to climb the Minecraft parkour spiral that you see on the back of every single TikTok that ever lived. Yeah, this is as easy as the rest of the game. And now we beat this buffoon who is just wasting my time. We ring the final bell that frees all the missing Pokemon from Wish Park's clutches. Wish Park, however, is signaled for its grand opening. All the four zones that we've been to collide, finishing the park, as well as opening up a portal. We reach the entrance where the three gods warn us. If we go any further, we will be met nothing but despair. If that's okay? We made it to Wish Palace. We're here to defeat this so-called master and save Piplup and all of Poke Park. Haven't you ever wanted to be with your best friend? Play forever without it bothering you? Yeah, Piplup's kind of far gone. I finally realized. Wish Park, that can happen. Pikachu, let's play in Wish Park. Just you and me, forever and ever. Piplup, he's been driven mad because of the mind control. We had to battle him to knock sense into him. And just like always. Piplup snapped out of it, but he ran. The boss. We've been foiling his plans for the whole game, baiting every single attraction and saving the missing Pokemon. He realizes that this so-called power of friendship doesn't work if you're not friends. Epic. Gone. Snivy. Gone. Oshwad. One of our only friends since the very beginning. Gone. We try as hard as we can to stay awake. And eventually, we fail. Yo, over the many years of Pokemon, they've had their fair share of spin-offs. From the incredible Pokemon Mystery Dungeon to whatever the hell this is. But there's seemingly one series that no one talks about. And maybe that's for the best. But this game, it's different. Alone, everyone that we love is far gone. We're in a world for one and one alone. Our lowest point, where... All we can do is cry. But when someone hits rock bottom, the only way to go is up. We now have to save our friends, and who better to start with than Oshawa? We found him at Seasong Beach. He seems lost, but accepts our battle. After we finally beat him, he starts to remember. It looks like the memory loss isn't strong enough. 
we need to find Snivy. She's at Deerling's house where we became friends and seems bored. We challenge her to chase. Snivy put up a run, however, we ultimately succeeded. Snivy also now remembers us, but now we need Tepic. Tepic is by the cannon that we shot him out of where we first met. He seems so scared now, but we challenge him to a battle. He put up a really good fight, and we won again. And of course, us winning helped him remember all the confidence that he built up. Now, we're all back together, meaning we can get to Wish Palace. Our final Carpal Tunnel minigame, and we enter Wish Park to take it down for good. Darkrai, since the very beginning, has been manipulating everything to create a place that is going to destroy the world. We now must fight. Darkrai teleports all over the place, but we're still able to get some good hits in. We take him down relatively easily, but the fight's not over. This part is definitely the hardest part of the fight, and probably the entire game. I took some bad damage in the start because I didn't know his attacks. I also missed a couple times, but both he and I were low, and I accidentally summoned a Pokemon to defeat him. Whoops, he defeated him once. We're not done though, as horrible things are happening outside. The darkness, just as it was said, is swallowing everything. Pokey Park and Wish Park don't have much time, but there still is hope. Reuniclus comes and explains that with the light polar right, we'll be able to stop the vortex. If we ring the four bells at the exact same time, we can activate the orb. However, someone must carry it into the vortex. Whoever does this, however, will likely die. We run over to the flight zone bell and wait for everyone to get ready. Then, we ring all four of them. We make our way back but notice Oshawa's falling behind. Everything is breaking behind him, but Oshawa nearly doesn't make it. We pull and pull, but then he realizes what he has to do. He lets go of Snivy and Tepig, both getting sucked in as well. We hold on to Piplup, our last remaining friend, before he also gets sucked in. We realize what we have to do, but Darkrai beat us to it. He flies into the vortex, stopping it and saving everyone from his own mistake. And there you go. That is the story of the saddest Pokemon game you've never played. I really wanted to thank you all for all the support on the first video, which is so insane. Thank you all so much. We get the like goal and more. Really, there's nothing else for me to say other than thank you for watching and have a happy new year.